This video is brought to you by the book In Flight Emergencies, a step-by-step -step guide to handling the unexpected. Inside the book, Jason shares his stories and dozens of others in addition to video from actual emergencies. Visit InFlightEmergencies.com to learn more and grab your copy. Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and welcome into day three of the 31 Days to Safer Pilot Challenge where each day I give you a video to help make you a safer pilot. In today's video, we're going to talk about engine failures now in flight. We've talked about them on takeoff with and without usable runway remaining, but what happens if we're at cruise altitude now and we have an engine failure? I'm going to run you through the ABCs of an engine failure and give you some great in-flight footage on what to do if you encountered that situation. Let's cut to the video. So like any other day, it is an absolutely beautiful day to go flying. Again, everything checked out okay, pre-flight run up, there were no squawks, everything was a-okay. And it just so happens this time in our scenario, we're aloft and we experience an engine failure. The moment the engine quits, you need to go into what I call the ABCs of an emergency. And the ABCs are this. A is for airspeed. What is that airplane's best glide speed? I want to stay aloft as long as possible to troubleshoot and give me plenty of time to think this thing through. Pitch for your best glide speed, your best airspeed. Not only pitch for it, but trim for it as well, so it's one less thing you have to worry about. B is my best landing area. Now keep in mind, your best landing area might be behind you or below you. Commonly in emergency situations, we get this tunnel vision and we only want to look out as to what's right out in front of us. Don't forget, if you got the altitude, to look behind you and below you. And C is our checklist. The last thing I want you doing is fumbling around with a checklist in your hand while you're about to make the most important landing of your life. I want you to have that checklist memorized. Have a flow check memorized that you can just run through, fuel selector valve, carb heat, etc. Um, if you don't have the altitude to perform the checklist, don't worry about it. Focus on making that landing. Now, in our case, we've pitched for our best glide speed. We've chosen our best landing area, which happened to be right below us. It was an airport, and I really do suggest you guys um, practice these into airports as well so you can really see how that airplane glides and performs all the way down to the ground. And what you're going to see here is we're just going to treat this as literally a normal landing. As you'll see, I'm just overflying the field. We're actually going to swing it around for a left downwind on runway 28. It's a traffic pattern. You know, we've flown thousands of times. So we're going to treat it just like a normal landing. Here we are overflying the runway uh, 28. We're going to turn a nice tight downwind. We're not going to use flaps until we know we've got that runway made. And we're still going to hold that best glide speed. Now, when coming in here, it's super important to remember that it is easier to lose altitude than it is to gain altitude, obviously, in this situation. So here we are in the downwind. Watch how tight we turn our base. We want to keep everything nice and tight and close in. Again, much easier to lose that altitude through a slip or something um, rather than trying to get some of that altitude back when we don't have that thrust. So we're turning our base right about now. As you can see, we're coming in. In just a second, I'm going to add a notch of flaps because when I was turning this, uh, the final approach, here's my flaps now. Um, I realized I was a little bit high. You know, I had that uh, runway made. I knew I could use the flaps. And I'm simply coming in. I've made all the proper radio calls, especially if you're simulating the situation. You need to let everyone know what you're doing. Let them know it's a simulated engine out, simulated engine failure. Um, and bring it in for a nice smooth landing. I also really recommend when the engine, when you've gone from like 2,000, 3,000 feet all the way down to uh, down to the ground with the engine idle, I really recommend you uh, back taxi rather than trying to do a touch and go in this situation. Much easier on the uh, 
uh, the engine. So what we talked about was the ABCs of an engine failure. A for airspeed, B for best landing area. Keep in mind that best landing area might be behind you or below you. And C is your checklist. Guys, that's all I have for you for day three. Day four is really going to tie all this together. It's going to be really exciting. So check out that video tomorrow. And most importantly, guys, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya.